Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus is on pulmonary lecture number 17, restlessness and hypoxia. And this sticky note found on NursingCamp.com, social media, Instagram, Facebook, and um, Pinterest. Alright, so let's get into it. Alright, I wanted to talk a little bit about... Uh, uh, restlessness and the reason I'm talking about restlessness because we're looking at NCLEX and we're looking at the importance of seeing things in a question that means that that patient is acute and restlessness is acute anxiety is acute and we should never ever ignore these in a, in a uh, NCLEX question so the way to think about this is is that a nurse walks into the room and the nurse has a blindfold on. And that blindfold is how you assess. You assess through your eyes. Now, if you have a blindfold on and you walk into the room, and the first question is, is, that, is are they breathing or are they not? If they're breathing, you're nursing. Okay. If they're not breathing, do they have a pulse? And if there's no pulse... That's CPR. You see that lecture where I talk about that. But we're talking about breathing. And if they aren't breathing, or they're having shortness of breath, they're going to have restlessness and anxiety first. And that's going to be the boat coming. And the boat is problems. And these are problems before acute respiratory distress becomes acute respiratory failure and I cover that a little bit later but the principle is restlessness all right so you walk into a room and some principles are is is that a nursing process you always assess before you implement so you always look for the data before you intervene implement okay so the principle is is that you're not going to walk in a room blind and if the patient was sitting supine, put them in high fowlers. The reason you don't do that is because you're blind. You're not seeing any data to put them in high fowlers, the intervention. All right. So let's take the next step. A patient is admitted with COPD. What is nursing priority? Well, COPD is not enough information to do an implementation like this, put them in high fowlers. Because what kind of COPD is it? Is it emphysema? Is it asthma? Is it bronchitis? I don't know. So I need to assess. I don't intervene, and I don't do that kind of assessment. So let's look at this in the form of a question. So a patient is admitted with COPD. What is nursing priority? Well, priority, action, what is it? Vital signs, uh, an ABG, notify doctor, or um, <clears throat> place patient in high fowlers. Okay, so let's look at this. All right, so a patient is made with COPD. Uh, what's nursing priority? Well, like I said before, there's not enough data to um, put them in high followers, right? Because that's an implementation. But the vital signs, what is that? That's an assessment. ABG is also an assessment. And notifying the doctor. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. All right, so nurse walks into the room. Whenever you have a question and all you have is COPD, well, the first question is, is that what kind? Right? That requires assessment. Well, hey, Doc, so I always say that whenever you have notify the doctor, think about 2 a.m. Take the same question, and would you call a doctor at 2 a.m. with this data? Well, doctor, um, I have a patient with COPD. What do you want me to do? What are they going to ask? Well, what does the patient look like? Assessment. You see, if there's anything that I could do in the room first, before I call the doctor, I do that. And I have some assessments I could do before notifying the doctor. Because if I had a normal pulse ox, 
in normal vital signs, would I still call the doctor? Probably not. Because all I have is COPD. All right, so that's kind of a do nothing. In priority questions, we don't just do nothing. All right, so the next thing is implementation. Well, based on the COPD diagnosis, will I just place them in the high follows? No. No implementation because I need an assessment. So I go right to assessment. So I have two assessments here. I have an ABG and vital signs. Well, vital signs are generally first. And why would I need an ABG? An ABG is invasive. No data, right? So if I have a, so let's add to this question. So the credit answer would be vital signs because I would want to get the pulse ox. You could switch this and take vital signs out and you could write pulse ox. And that would be the correct answer. ABG would not. That would be a distractor. All right, so let's, let's change this. So patients admitted with COPD has a pulse ox of um, 85 um, in high followers. What's nursing priority? Okay. Um, take vital signs. Take the same question. Um, a, uh, get an ABG. Um, notify doctor. And... Um, Place patient in high followers. Okay, so all right, is the patient in distress? Yes, yeah, COPD, pulse ox 85%, and um, shortness of breath. Okay, well, um, vital signs. Well, I have enough data that says that the vital signs, I don't need to do vital signs again. ABG, okay, yes, that's an assessment, but is the patient in distress? Yes, they're in distress. So assessment is not needed. The patient is in distress. I need an intervention. Place the patient in high follows. Well, should they already be in high follows? Well, it doesn't say that. I have an option. And nursing priority would be put them in high follows. Because there's enough distress in the question to say that the person needs high follows. Notify doctor. If I could do anything in the room, I could put them in high follows. So I'll do that first. So restlessness is an important piece because restlessness is never ever ignore restlessness. Restlessness happens and um, tachycardia happens before the patient decompensates. Like I said, 16 to 24 is normal respirations. Once they start to get greater than 24, they start to go into restlessness. 30, they start to get tired. Greater than 30, that patient is in distress. And we, we learn that you know, once a patient starts to go from 30s and they start to, this is acute respiratory distress. Once they start to decrease, if you have two respirations from 32 down to 14, that's acute. That patient is decompensated. Um, if you see 10, they're definitely acute. And eight, as we said, is intubate. And that patient needs a bag valve mask. You need to be respirating that patient. You would notify the doctor um, because that patient is no longer uh, maintaining oxygen saturations. All right, I just wanted to cover quickly on rest restlessness and hypoxia and some general principles about assessment before implementation. In the next lecture, I'm going to be talking more about um, early findings and then late findings of hypoxia. That's it. My name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp. Um, cover my NCLEX questions and... Um, yeah, I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and social media. Nurse on. We'll talk to you next time.